Fight fans, welcome to the PBC Podcast, brought to you by Premier Boxing Champions with your host, Kenneth Buhari and Michael Rosenthal. Welcome, everyone, to the PBC Podcast. I'm Kenneth Buhari. And I'm Michael Rosenthal, editor of USA Today's Boxing Junkie. Thank you guys for tuning in. This week, we've got undefeated WBC featherweight champ Mark Magsayo joining us. We'll have him on a little later in the show. Also, in this week's toe-to-toe segment, Mike and I will list our top five under 25, the top five PBC fighters under 25 years old. But let's jump right into our first guest this week. He's a rising lightweight sensation who will take a big Step up in class against Jezreel Corrales Saturday, September 4th at the Crypto Arena live on Fox Sports Pay-Per-View, the undefeated Jose Rayo Valenzuela. Jose, how excited are you to be taking this big step up fight versus Jezreel Corrales on September 4th? Um, I'm extremely, you know, I'm extremely uh, happy and excited, uh, mainly because, um, Corrales being such a tricky fighter, you know, a hard, hard, hard opponent. Um, and to see my promotion company, you know, really believe in me and uh, letting me fight that, uh, that opponent is, uh, is a good feeling. So, you know, um, I'm ready to come uh, April 4th and put on a great show. You, you kind of mentioned Corrales being a tricky fighter. Uh, assess him for us. Give us your thoughts from one fighter to another. What do you see when you look at a fighter like Corrales? <clears throat> Um, you know, he's, he's, he's just a tricky, he's the kind of fighter that will, will give anybody problems and, and can make anyone look bad if you don't come correct that night, you know? In your last fight, you stopped Francisco Vargas in 85 seconds. So I have to ask, what took so long? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I had a great camp. I, I was extremely prepared. I, I felt extremely camped through the whole spar- um, uh, extremely strong through the whole uh, sparring in camp I was having, and um, I knew I would hurt him when I hit him, but I just didn't know how, how fast or how late it would come in the fight, you know, and, and it came early, uh, but I'm, I'm, I was happy with my, my work. <clears throat> so that obviously was a big win for you. What statement do you think you made in that fight? Uh, that, I, that I'm for real, you know, that, I, that I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm here to stay, and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm making a lot of noise. You know, Jose, in like one year, you've gone from someone who, you know, was kind of being whispered about to now being known as one of the best prospects in boxing. You're, you're being featured on TV and, and big cards. Does it all feel, you know, surreal to you how, how fast your career is moving? Um, yes and no, because um, obviously, like behind closed doors, I'm putting a lot of work in. Uh, you know, I'm in the gym every day, three times a day. So, you know, it's a great feeling to see it pay off. Um, and at the same time, I always knew I would be here. I always knew I had the skill sets to uh, fight with these top guys, so I just knew it was a matter of time. You mentioned being in the gym every day. What role does someone like uh, David Benavides, who's an elite world champion caliber fighter, what role uh, has he played in, in your development? You know, he's played a, a big role. He he's a great, uh, has a great influence in my style, um, as well as my work ethic. You know, that guy works extremely hard, and and, you know, it just grew on to me and, and, and as well as his dad, you know. Uh, there's also a few other fighters in our in our camp. Like, we got Diego Pacheco. And, and so our camp is always working, you know. If one guy might fight, but somebody else still has a fight. So we're always in the gym. <clears throat> so it's like we take a week off, two weeks off, and we're right back to work. What advice or tip has uh, David given you that really stands out? Or is, or is there anything that really stands out? Um. <clears throat> Just to be calm, be poised, you know, get this experience early. You don't, you don't got to wait so long to, you know, uh, kind of like ease into the that experience. You know, with my last fight with the Vargas, he has he had a lot of great experience, but I showed a lot of poise. I showed I used my jab, and, you know, that definitely comes from David. So you made your first trip to New York in May to see the Tank Davis-Raleigh uh, Romero fight at Barclays uh, Center. What was that experience like for you? Um, great experience, you know, first time in New York, <clears throat> beautiful city. Um, and then just to be at the Barclays Center watching uh, such a great fight was uh, was amazing. You know, I uh, ran into some um, some fans out there that showed me love. So, you know, that's really great feeling. Nice. Now, I, that was a, a crazy crowd that night. I mean, it was, it was jam-packed in there. Uh, there were a lot of celebrities. Do you 
see yourself in those kind of big fights in, in the near future? Yeah, you know, it felt like it definitely I, I belong there, you know. Um, I think I got everything it takes to be a star. You know, I have the skill sets. I have great IQ. I have power. I have speed. You know, and, and I just the way I carry myself, you know, I, I think um, I what it takes to be a star. Did you have you set a goal as far as, you know, when you want a world championship? Like you have a date or an age in your head as far as when you uh, want to fight and win that title? Uh, I want, to be being realistically, I'm ready. To, I feel like I'm ready for a title shot. But realistically, um, I think next year um, I, I, I want a world title around my waist. Is it, you're really sort of on fire now. Is it, is it difficult to be patient? Yeah, just because I know I can I can compete with all these guys. I've been in there with all these guys. You guys know me, and, and I know them. So, so, but it's just, you know, part of, you know, it's part of the game. I got to be patient, got to bite down a little bit, and, <clears throat> you know, take it step by step. Very but, good. Yeah, that's where it comes from, a little being a little impatient because I know I can uh, compete with these guys. Well, you got to have the confidence. Uh, you you have a good amateur background and some good wins as a pro. Diner Barrio, Austin Dulé, uh, and, Var- and now Vargas. But you only have 12 fights, so some might say it's still a little early for you. How would you how would you respond to that? Um, I, I you know it, I, it and you know I I'm, I agree too. You know to a certain extent, <clears throat> but the thing is, I come with um, I've been working with this team that has a lot of experience, and they've done nothing but take me and. Uh, you know, around around the you know, just to get great sparring. They're teaching me uh, things that not the regular Joe is to see or you know to learn because you know they're not uh, around David Benavides or his brother and his dad who's a world class trainer. You know, I, I I am so you know I feel like I have that advantage over people. Got it. So I'm, I guess I'm asking you this question sort of as a, a fan or as an observer. So the lightweight division is stacked right now. So aside from yourself, who do you rank as the top 135 pounder? Um, I think skills, uh, skills, and just overall, I think Tank. Um, tank. Okay, you're not alone. What, what is it about Tank you, that, that, in your opinion, um, he, ranks? He, he, he can just box, and you can never, you know, when you have power like that, you can end the fight in any moment. Yeah. So you know, that's, gotta respect that. Um, but as yeah. long as the other weight, <clears throat> the other guys, champions at the weight division, um, if I'm being realistically, I think I'm a harder fight for. Devin Haney, then he's a hard, uh, then he is for me, you know. Uh, mm. He's a great fighter, but um, stylistically, um, I'm, I'm bigger, and I don't think he could, he could run from me for, for 12 rounds, you know. I uh, would eventually start putting, start putting my punches together, working the body, and then working the top. <laughs> so, is, if you had to name that one fighter that you want to face, who would it be? Uh, just anyone with the belt, any of these guys who are uh, champions. That's that's the right mindset. Uh, I, I want to go back a little bit. You know, growing up, or you know, as you got into boxing, who are the some of the fighters that you you emulated or you enjoyed watching? Um, uh, Chavez, Manny Pacquiao, and Pernell Whitaker. Um, oh, a lot of lefties. You know, I was I was high on lefties. My um, I would watch a lot of Lara, uh, mm. Randy Lara, Rondell, um. Just people I could pick up from, you know, Manny Pacquiao, he was, he was very exciting, so I used to love Manny Pacquiao. Uh, are there any fighters today, uh, aside from the Benavides, is, are there any fighters today that, that you like to watch? You know, I'm having a hard, I've been having a hard time uh, uh, kind of finding, you know, that just the love to watching, you know, because uh, I'm, I'm also at a higher level now, so it's hard for me to learn, you know. Um, but I would say I, I love watching Inoue um, and his boots. He's a hell of a fighter, and um, Bam, Bam, uh, the one, one fifteen pound. Bam Rodriguez, yeah, yeah, yeah. You pick three hot guys. Uh, getting back to September fourth, so Corrales is is more of a boxer than a, than a puncher. Uh, he's got that style. Do you expect you'll have to be more patient with him in this fight? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to be a little patient. I'm gonna have to cut off the ring and and. And use my jab. The thing, I'm I'm also bigger, so um, chasing these guys down or getting close in the distance is not is not uh, as difficult as the because I'm 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 longer, so my jab you know gets there faster, and, and it's like I don't have to, you know, usually smaller guys they have to work their way in, and I'm kind of I can just you know use my jab and, and work from there. You sort of just alluded to this, but sort of generally speaking, then you see a lot of guys sort of fail to cut off the ring. They just can't do it. What's the what's the secret? What's the key to cutting off a ring 
uh, against a guy who can move like that? Um, just being patient, you know. Uh, just being patient, using your jab and using your feints. You let him, you know, you do a little feint, let him move to where he's going to move, and then kind of just beat him to it, and then slowly start coming in. Got it. Okay, so uh, how do you see the fight playing out? Um, I can see him, uh, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll say, like, yeah, like, he, it'll be a tricky fight early on, um, and then I'll start, you know, <clears throat> when I start catching momentum and then start taking off and like after the second round but uh, sometimes you know I just get in there and I, and I start landing punches uh right away and so uh I just you know go from there very good Jose it's been a pleasure talking to you I really appreciate you giving us this time best of luck in this fight and going forward thank you thank you guys for the interview appreciate it, Jose all the best all right you guys have a good day thank you too It's time for Mike and I to go toe-to-toe. This week, the topic is the top five PBC fighters under 25. This was a little tougher uh, than I thought. I had to dig in uh, a little bit. We're going to go in ascending order as always. So, Mike, the floor is yours. Okay, actually, just real quick to preface this it wasn't that hard for me to come up with five guys it was the order that was hard uh, although there's yeah. seven eight seven eight nine guys who could have obviously been part of this list anyway my number five uh and just to be clear this is 24 or younger uh and actually just to throw out an interesting little tidbit four out of my five guys are actually 24 years old uh number five my number five isaac cruz who is 24 um he's an aggressive durable power puncher, you know, hence his nickname, Pitbull. It's a very apt nickname for him. Uh, I think he demonstrated in the close loss to Gervonta Davis uh, last December that he's no ordinary brawler, though. Uh, nobody's pushed tank like that. Cruz uses intelligent pressure, I think, which is how he's able to win clear decisions, you know, when he can't knock out his opponents. Uh, he's the type of guy who's going to push you to your limits and make you look bad, even if you beat him. Uh, and not many guys are going to be able to do that. I would think twice before putting my fighter in with this little monster. Yeah, I agree with you, and I will touch on Isa Cruz in a little bit. Uh, my number five is Jose Valenzuela, uh, 23 years old. Uh, we just spoke to him. Uh, really good resume. Uh, you know, Francisco Vargas, obviously the big one over Austin Delay, Dana Barrio. Um, he's got another step up fight versus Jezreel Corrales next. Excuse me. Uh, but what I like about this guy, he's got a great work ethic. He isn't afraid to bang. Um, he's always in the gym, you know, honing his skills, good power, uh, high ceiling is how I look at him. And that's why uh, he's on my list. Yeah, he's on my list, but a little bit higher. So I will discuss okay. him in a bit. Let's go to number four. Who you got? My number four is uh, Sebastian Fundora, who's also 24. So I'm probably still not giving Fundora enough respect having him number four here, but he definitely has to be on this list. Uh, You know, he's an impossibly tall, skinny guy who seems vulnerable, but somehow he just never isn't. Um, He doesn't usually use his height and reach advantage in his fights, as everybody knows. That's part of what makes him so intriguing to me. He likes to fight inside, and he's just so good at it. He hurts his opponents with those hard, whipping shots, uh, and he just doesn't stop, as we saw in his big win over Erickson Lubin. The Towering Inferno is one of my favorite fighters. I just love watching this guy fight. Yeah, he's he's a joy to watch, and uh, he's on my list, too, so I'm going to withhold saying anything. <laughs> the order. Here is uh, the order. Thing. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my number four is Michelle Rivera, um, the uh, the Dominican uh, fighter with the uncanny resemblance to Muhammad Ali. Uh, he's got a really nice resume. Uh, Joseph Adorno's real nice win. Uh, John Fernandez, uh, Rene uh, Giron, Ladarius Miller, Jose Romero. He's been matched tough early in his career. He's a smooth boxer, exudes confidence. Uh, 24 years old, but he's got the the poise of a veteran, and I think he's at the point now where uh, you know you step him up and see what he can do against the next level. So I agree with everything you said, which is why I'm just going to jump into my number three, which is Michelle <laughs> Rivera, uh, okay. also 24. Uh, as you said, he's just a terrific technician with one of the best jabs in the business, in my opinion, and he has the ability to hurt opponents too. Uh, he also has a fighter spirit. I remember he got up from a knockdown to stop John Fernandez, who you mentioned earlier that showed me something told me something about Rivera uh 
I want to see more of that spirit in his last fight against Joseph Adorno. He re maybe he relied a little too much on his boxing. He didn't shift into another gear, even though he probably could have. But that's all part of the learning process. I really like everything about this guy. Well, I, I guess we should go to number uh, – I, sh I should go to my number three then um, since I just discussed your number three. And my number three is Jesus Ramos. Uh, 21 years old, again, another fighter with a really good resume at this age. Uh, we saw the win over Luke Santa Maria, uh, you know, Vladimir Hernandez, Brian Mendoza, Javier Molina. I just think he needs more seasoning, more time. I, I thought the Santa Maria fight probably was a good learning experience for him. But we, we know what this kid has. He's got pop in both hands, good boxing uh, style, can fight on the inside, can fight on the outside. He's real relaxed. Uh, in the ring and, and is still very, very young. He's uh, nowhere near reached his ceiling. Yeah, that's uh, the last thing you said. And the fact you said that he needs a little bit more seasoning is why he didn't make my list. But he was on my list of guys that I considered. Like when I said seven or eight guys, he's one of those guys, obviously. But he didn't quite make it. But like you said, the guy's got a really, really high ceiling. I For love, sure. I, I love well, that guy. I got to know who you got at number two. So my number two is Jose Valenzuela, uh, 23 years old. Um, you know, as we're discussing, you know, I'm thinking maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit on this guy, but I just, I just have a feeling about this guy. Um, you know, I, I described him uh, on an earlier podcast as a relentless volume puncher with power who can also take a punch. Uh, he's just a monster, physical monster. Uh, what I didn't mention, at least the last time we spoke about him, is he also has a lot of ability. Um, his style wouldn't be effective, I don't think, if he didn't know what he was doing in the ring. He definitely does. He's a dangerous, dangerous package who already has knockouts of Austin Dulé and Francisco Vargas, which you mentioned. I just expect really big things from this guy, and I don't think it's that far into the future. Yeah, I, you know what? You're right. I mean, look at who he's facing next, Jezreel Corrales, and obviously if he scores a big win there, uh, who knows what will be next for uh, for Valenzuela. And I don't blame you. I, I sort of did my list based on who they beaten already. But if we're going by projection, then I might have to move some of the stuff around. And I, 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 sir, I you know, I understand uh, where you're coming from and, and why you've uh, ordered the fighters that way. My number two is Isak Cruz, who you mentioned before, 24 years old. We saw what he could do against uh, Tank Davis. Really, we saw it when he blasted out Diego Magdaleno in 53 seconds. And then again, when uh, he beat down Yuri Yorkis Gamboa. It's a hard hitter, determined, intelligent pressure is how you describe it. And I think that's perfect. He's young. He's, uh, he's a savage. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We keep talking about the order. I think I... I, I you know, jumbled my order like five times before yeah. we actually started yeah. doing the podcast. So he was actually a couple of places higher at one point. So yeah, I, I think he proved against Davis what he is. He's a really, yeah. really good fighter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's move on. What you got? So after all this, and I think we agree on number one, I think, uh, David Morrell. We, we uh, don't actually, well, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, that surprises me. Maybe I shouldn't have, uh, assumed anything. Uh, <laughs> I, I just think he's the most advanced, most complete fighter of this bunch. Uh, I keep going back to his Cuban amateur background, which is obviously extremely valuable. His foundation is just so solid. He can box. He's smart. He's quick. He's athletic. And on top of that, he seems to have serious, serious knockout power. So I'm not sure I see a real weakness, may, except for maybe the experience on the professional level. Um you know, I was talking about his power. All six of his knockouts have come with in four rounds or less. Um, all this is why he's being moved so quickly. I think he's a special fighter. Of course, I have to add that the jury is still out on him, at least to some degree, because he hasn't faced top-tier opposition yet. I'm just pretty sure he's going to do exceedingly well. He has a big, big future in this sport. Yeah, you know, he was originally on my list, but then when I went and looked at who they've beaten thus far, um, he he fell out of my top five simply because the other guys had, had beaten, other, you know, uh, higher rank contenders. But again, if you're looking at potential and you look at, you, at at his total package, he could have easily been number one. I mean, I think I may have had him number two or number one initially. And then I said, let me do a little deeper dive into their resume. So um, I get it. I mean, the guy... He's shown it all, and although he hasn't done it as a professional, he certainly was an incredible amateur. So, um, you know, one can expect it to translate. My number one is someone you mentioned before, Sebastian Fundura. Um, yeah. It's also 24 years okay. old. Yeah. Sorry. Um, 
And, you know, I, he's easily beaten the best opposition on this list so far. Uh, Jorge Cota, Sergio Garcia, and then, of course, the big knockout win against Erickson Lubin. So he is the most advanced fighter um, on, on this list. He's a physical freak, uh, a gym rat from a fighting family, uh, fan-friendly. He's got star potential. And I, I, I can't wait to see who you put this guy in against next. I mean, I'm, I'm very excited to see what... What is next for him? Yeah, so actually, so we didn't really discuss the the parameters. Uh, obviously, the, the no, listeners are well, that's what made that. it more fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you see, you went this so almost like the way we approach we approach pound our, for pound. Our pound, for pound. <laughs> yes, but I did want to consider resume. I just thought that when I when I went with Morel, when I say he's the most advanced, I think just most advanced skill wise. I think he could. Right. I think he could right now. He could compete with anybody. The top you know, that guys, kind of thing, but yeah. we just don't know that for sure. Which is what, which is the way you approach this, and that makes sense too. Because if Morel falls yeah. flat, you know, like when he steps up, then I look like I'm an idiot. But uh, I just oh, think that, then a lot of people look like. It. <laughs> yeah, I just think I just think he's got he's got the goods. But you know how I feel about Fundora. He could, yeah, you can argue that he's he's number one just based that Lubin victory was just yeah. insane. It was absolutely yeah. insane. I think he he came of age in that fight. Um, and 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 I think I said after that fight, there's nothing he could do now going forward that would surprise me. I mean, he could fight exactly. uh, Jermel yeah. Charlo and win, and I wouldn't be completely shocked after what yeah. I saw in that fight. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see who he faces next. I can't wait to see who Morel faces next. I mean, you know, it's great to see what these guys have coming up. Um, I think the next year is going to be so crucial for them. So I am really, really excited. Our next guest is the current WBC featherweight champion, and he will defend that title Saturday, July 9th, against a fellow undefeated fighter in former champion Ray Vargas. That's live on Showtime from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Mark Maxayo. First things first, how has how has camp been for you? Uh, the training camp is uh, good. Uh, we've been doing great since um, last week of March, so until now. So um, I, I will prepare. Will prepare. Well, let's go back to a little bit because you're a world champion now. Um, earlier this year, you beat Gary Russell. Uh, you're now the undefeated WBC world featherweight champion. Tell me what that means to you. It really, um, it's really a lot to me. Mean to me because uh, my dream come true to become a world champion. So this is my dream to become a world champion, and now I work hard for the next fight. How has your life changed since this this victory? It's a little bit changed because I I really bought a, my dream house in in my country, so I bought a house for my family and put a little bit business, so they they settle now. That's fantastic. Good to hear that. Uh, what, what did you obviously a fight like that against a veteran fighter like that? You you learn things. What did you learn in that fight? I I have a I learned a lot of that fight uh, because. I need to make an ad adjustment for that fight because he keep running after that he hurt his arm, his shoulder. So I need to adjust and focus on win every round. Focus the fight and win every round. Right, right. So you mentioned the shoulder. Some people said after that fight, well, Gary Russell injured his shoulder. He wasn't 100%. Is it fair to even bring that up given that you did what you were supposed to do in that fight? Yeah. If that fight is, is, is if that uh, shoulder is not hurt, maybe it's, yeah, there's a knock out there because my my counter punch, my counter is very effective that fight, and a couple of rounds, one to three rounds is very effective, and my counter and my speed and my power is connect to him very effective, and that that time that he got hurt, he's always running now, so it's hard to catch when you when your opponent's running and good fighter, yeah. That's that's a very good point. Uh, I was there, and in the early rounds, before he hurt his shoulder, you yeah. were winning the rounds. So yeah, that, sir. That, yeah, that, that's a my really good point. My chest is very effective to him. So I think I, I think if he's not going to run all, the, all that fight, maybe there's a knockout. Yeah, there's a really knockout. <laughs> now, let's, let's, let's look ahead. July 9th at the Alamo Dome, you have Ray Vargas. What can you tell us about, about Vargas? I'm Ray Vargas. Uh, he's a tall fighter. He's a slugger fighter. All his fights is I. He runs. All his fights. I saw. I saw every fight. So, I hope he's not gonna run too much for this coming fight. Because if he's not gonna run this run too much this fight, there's gonna be a great night 
for a Mexican to American Filipino fight. Well, we had him on on the uh, the PBC podcast a couple weeks ago, and he says that that he's looking to knock you out early in the uh, in in the fight. What would be your response to that? Um, I don't think uh, all everybody my opponent told that, like Seha told me, uh, knock him out, uh, Ray Russell. So I used to it. So I am my my face. Let talk about that fight. When, when your opponents say something like that, does it just motivate you even more? More motivate me because it's more inspiring me because it's more encouraging me. Yeah, and to, it, to fight like that. When they talk about me, I'm gonna knock you out like like Chris Avalos. I gonna kill you. Like <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's fight in the ring. Got it. Got it. Well, actually, if he's if he's gonna fight aggressively, that would work to your favor, right? Yes. If he runs, but we're ready for that. When he runs, when you when he forward or whatever he do, we're really ready. We're ready for that. Great. So you're going from a fighter in Russell who is shorter than you are to one who's got a big height and length advantage in Vargas. What adjustments do you have to make in a situation like that? With the Russell's fight. Well, Russell's a smaller guy, short guy, yeah. and Vargas is a tall guy with Both long guys. arms. Is it yeah. you have to make adjustments? Tell us about those adjustments. Um, the, the guy who told me that um, the key to win in this fight is footwork. I need my adjustment. Is uh, I need to adjust like in my footwork because they're tall guy. This this guy is tall guy and he's run. So I need my footwork and hit movement. So. So the, let's see. Let's see. It's, uh, that's uh, effective. Now you, you you trade out of the wild card gym, Freddie Roach's gym. Can you tell us where you see the the most improvement in you uh, since you began working with with Freddie and and in uh, that gym? Um, when I train in wild card gym, I learn a lot because when I arrived, I thought I already know about boxing. So they correct my mistakes. They act, they they perfect my. Uh, this not, not it's not perfect. It's a uh, they make my punches accurate. So I'm very happy that I have a legendary coach and Coach Marvin uh, guiding me in, in this career. So I'm so happy that I belong to the wildcard now, and they they correct all my mistakes in boxing. So very helpful in my career. You're you're also part of uh, the uh, MP banner, MP promotions Promotion. banner. Um, which is Manny Pacquiao's uh, company. What's the most valuable lesson that you've learned from Manny? Um, for me, it's uh, discipline. Discipline. It, it gives me some, how to discipline yourself and um, train hard every day. And yeah, discipline. Because if you don't have a discipline in, in, in boxing, it's like you're nothing. So, uh... One might say that all Filipino fighters now are, are going to be judged by the standards that Manny Pacquiao has set. Uh, do you feel pressure at all following following Manny, knowing that people are saying, who's the next Manny Pacquiao? Uh, there's no next Manny Pacquiao. It's only one Manny Pacquiao. There's no next Manny Pacquiao. But for me, I, I train hard. I working hard my uh, my butt in, in, in every day in the, in the gym. So... I don't. I, I I work hard, so I don't mind. I don't mind uh, that the people say that you're the next Manny Pacquiao. I told to them, there's no next Manny Pacquiao. I'm gonna put my name in in history with my own hard working. So I, I just be on be myself. Very good. Uh, so if you're successful against Vargas, uh, do you know who you want to fight next? I mean, there's. There's four title holders in that division. Are you eyeing anybody? Um, we're eyeing to uh, play Santa Cruz for this year. I think I'm gonna if I I'm gonna win this fight in in July 9th, and then the next fight maybe November or December in here here in LA with with Santa Cruz. So you 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 think there's a strong possibility that you'll get? Uh, that's yeah. a big fight. That's a target. Santa Cruz. As a target, sir. Okay, okay, I like it. Now, what one last question for you? We've seen you in person. You are a very big featherweight. Do you have uh, any issues, you know, in terms of uh, making weight? Is it easy for you to make weight? And do you plan to move up 
you know, at, at some point? Actually, I, 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 it's easy to get my way because I have a nutritionist like Janet Taro and from the Philippines. So she's coming with me today. She's, she's arrived. And actually, my weight last week is 132. We, we wait at 132. So my weight's flat, 132. It's easy to get 132. So I think the next week, the next week, I get 126 easy. Because now my weight now is like 134, 136, 10 pounds easy. That, that's, so that's, a, that's amazing. You, you've been yeah. at 126 for, 10, for a decade. Yes, sir. Almost decade, yeah. Yeah. I, we saw the photo. I think it was you and Sean Porter where it looked like you were bigger than him. And I thought, well, maybe that's the photo. Then we see you in the gym. And I said, no, no, that's a, a big, big uh, guy. So you've always been that way? Yeah, I've always been that way. Uh, my working weight is like 146 or 47. So maybe my legs and calves is big, are big. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's another thing you have in common with, with, uh, with Manny Pacquiao. Um, yes, sir. Mark, thank you so much for your, for your time. Thank you for thank having you. me, sir. All the best. Uh, July 9th, we look forward to seeing you, and we look forward to having you on the podcast again. Yes, sir. Again. Yeah. Good luck, Thank Mark. you for having me. Have a good day. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Take care. That's going to do it for this week's show. We want to thank Mark Maxayo and Jose Valenzuela for joining us. And we want to thank you, of course, for tuning in. Be sure to check back next week for more boxing talk, more banter, and more interviews right here on the PBC Podcast.